started. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, here and there. This is Pastor Gene Simmons uh, from All the World Christian Center in Grants Pass, Oregon. And uh, we are doing our Wednesday night Bible study, and uh, we are covering Ch James chapter 5 tonight. We should wrap this whole chapter up. We've uh, had a great time of going through those scriptures, uh, the rest of the, the book. And so we're going to wrap it up, and, and, uh, and then we're going to be doers of the word. One of the things that James does, he doesn't mess around. He, let, he says it just the way it is. He, does, he, uh, he lets it rip. So he's going to start off in chapter 5, and, and uh, uh, I don't know if there's anybody in here that's going to feel real uncomfortable about this, but... Uh, he's talking about the rich. Uh -oh. So let's pray. Yep. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that it's forever settled. We thank you that you hasten your word to perform it. And we thank you, Lord, that your word is what is the sword of the spirit that we have to fight off the enemy. We thank you that we're more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your, the, the anointing of the spirit on this message tonight. We pray for every person that hears it and pray right now that they'll not only hear it, but they'll they'll uh, grow closer to you in this. In Jesus' name, amen. James chapter 5, verse 1. He says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. And here's a warning all right now for the rich. But actually, when you sit down and, and read this and you study it out, He's talking about people that have got rich by in, in deceitful ways, by robbing people and deceiving people. As we go through this, you'll understand that that uh, uh, it's not wrong to have money, but it's how you use it and what you do with it is what is what really matters to God. So he's going to give us some good lessons on how to deal with money. But also, one thing that we have to remember as we start in this is that uh, the Bible says, in God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And he said, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. He also told us that we need to repent. And that means to quit doing that. So anybody that hears this message, if what, what we say today uh, grabs your heart or you get upset because... Uh, you maybe you think God's just preaching at you or I'm preaching at you. I'm not going to be preaching at you. I'm just going to read his word and we're going to talk about what he has to say because that's the only thing that really matters. Uh, my, my thoughts and ideas uh, are mine and God's are his. And his are forever settled and mine are subject to change. Every time I read the Bible, my mind and my thoughts change because I learn something. Because my desire in my heart is to be more like Jesus. So if you're out there and you hear something that disturbs you, just think, well, thank you, Lord, for letting me hear this today so that I have time to change, I re to repent and confess it as sin. And then the Bible says if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So I assume you all want to be in right standing with God, that when the time comes, Jesus either returns uh, to take his believe the believers away or we die and absent from the body present with the Lord we're standing there and he, he's gonna say well done thou good and faithful servant amen? amen I don't know about you but I want to be in right standing with God and I think you do too mm -hmm. because there's a heaven and hell are two, two opposites and uh, the Bible has a lot to say about both of them and after reading the Bible for as long as I have I don't want to be in hell I don't want to burn in the lake of fire and I know that because of what Jesus did for me, I am redeemed, and he set me free. Mm -hmm. But I have a choice every day whether I'm going to walk and trust and believe in what he has to say. So uh, he's going to say something about my money. So let's see what else he has to say about this. We're going to take a look at verse 2. He says, your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. These are He's talking to rich people that have the... Fanciest garments and the, and the, but he says your gold and silver are corroded and the corrosion will be a witness against you 
I will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Now, here's something that, that what God's telling us is that he doesn't mind if we have money, but if we hoard it up and we don't use it for God's purposes, it's going to come back and burn us. How many of you realize you can't take it with you? Mm -hmm. You just can't take it with you. I don't care how much you have. The only thing that you can take with you is your spirit and your heart and your spirit. Your spirit and your soul is going to make heaven. The rest of you isn't going to make it. But the thing about it is, if Jesus is your Lord, you're a joint heir with God, and you're going to need it over there. Mm -hmm. We're going to be blessed beyond our ability to even imagine. So I'm looking forward to that. But while I'm here, i got to do God's way. So I'm going to take a look at my finances and make sure I'm using it for a godly purpose. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Verse 4 says, Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the, the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. Okay, so in other words, the people that the rich people have screwed over, are uh, they're crying out to God. God hears their cries, and he's going uh, to make that come to pass. He's going to he's going to bring vengeance on upon those people, unless of course they repent and ask God to forgive them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, verse five, he says, "You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as the, in the day of slaughter. You have con condemned. You have murdered the just. He does not." resist you. In other words, the, the rich man takes advantage of the poor man. He makes him do things he, that he, he didn't want to do. He, he, uh, he slaughters the people. How many of you know there's a lot of people being slaughtered right now? Mm -hmm. let's, let's face it, since Roe versus Wade, we've had about 67,000 or 67 million babies aborted in America. We're not talking about around the world. Amen? Mm -hmm. Does that sound think that's going to please God any? No. Okay. So, and how many people are being uh, used in a, in a bad way right now by the world? Those people are going to stand before God and are going to give account. Mm -hmm. God still loves them. How many of you know that? Yeah. It's our job to pray for them, for their salvation and their redemption. Amen? Yeah. We need to pray. Yeah. So, verse 7. Oh, here's the here's the, my favorite part of the, the, the Bible. We all love this word, yes. don't we? Therefore, <laughs> be patient, brethren. Who's he talking to? Pastor. Believers. Mm -hmm. Believers. He says, be patient. This is one of the things where we're, uh, this is one of our weapons. If you're if you fly off the handle and and let her go and you can't wait but uh, you know 30 seconds for the light to change or whatever it is uh, or you're mad at somebody believe it or not it won't it won't add up for you in the long run we need to be patient if we're we're praying and believing for God for something how many of you know God has his his, his timing is perfect we can't rush him at all you can't rush God. If you're going through a, a trial in your life one way or the other, what you need to do is you're going to say, Lord, I'm thanking you, Lord. It, I, say, I give that to you. It's, all, it's, it's in your hands. And I'll be patient until the day is manifest. If you need a healing in your body, you say, thank you, Lord. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And I'll be patient until the perfect time is when you, when you, uh, uh, when you come and and heal me. Now, here's something that uh, that I think all of us have to know: that God uses His people for healing. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, "These signs will follow them that believe." Mm -hmm. So He didn't say these follow signs of pastors and evangelists and 
and prophets and evangelists. He says, these signs, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak in tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So God's got, believe it or not, there might be somebody out there that is suffering until the anointing that's in you is released to that person. That person is healed. We don't know who's God going to use, but somebody, God can use anybody. I can remember when I was a young, young Christian, I, we had a, a lady whose husband was a, a oil dealer here, and, and I, I knew her uh, uh, through my mom, and I was in Penny's downtown in Grants Pass. I walked in there, and I, and I saw her there, and I, I met her. I was, I was just a young pastor then, and, and I walked over and said, Hi, how you doing? She said, Oh, I have a horrible headache. I said, can I pray for you? And she said, oh, yeah. So I just reached over and touched her. I said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And the power of God hit her, and she fell over on the floor in the pennies. I was afraid I was going to get thrown in jail for, for pushing her down or something. But I didn't. I helped her up, and she was healed. You know, you never know when God can use you. The footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So God can use you in whatever area of your life, all you have to do is trust us. Say, here I am, Lord. What are we going to do today? Well, I'm walking with you. Okay? And believe it or not, that's all God wants us to do is just walk with him. He wants us to, to pray to him, walk with him. Amen? So, he, but he says, be patient. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get ripped off by the devil because they are not patient. They are not willing to wait for God to do, uh, to answer their prayer in their time. How many of you know God has a time schedule? Yeah. It's perfect. He knows exactly what to do. So what we have to do is, is every day we praise the Lord. We wake up. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And you start speaking the word of God, and then you walk in love all day. You try to bless somebody somewhere, wherever you're at. And you listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, hey, you see that person over there? They need prayer. Go pray for them. Who, me? He said, yeah, you. Well, the devil whispers in your ear. He says, what if they don't get healed? Oh, well. Then you say, well, God, what if they don't get healed? God says, what does my word tell you? Are you going to be obedient to me or are you going to obey the devil? Okay? All right? God's good. Amen? Yes. So we're all usable by God in some aspect at some time. Okay? Mm -hmm. And here's something else I was, as I was reading this, I was thinking about this, is that there are some people that will never make heaven without you because you're the only one that can share the true gospel with them and work with them and get them saved. They won't believe anybody else. They won't believe me. They won't believe uh, uh, anybody. But the, the, you, they'll believe because they know you, who you are and God puts you in their path on purpose. Okay? So you're really a special person. The, the difference you'll make is that you'll change eternity in heaven for everybody. There'll be one more person in there praising and worshiping God. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the angels in heaven will be rejoicing and they'll be dancing. There's going to be a party in heaven just because you said, okay, here I am, God. And you say, hey, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus is your died on the cross for you? Do you know how much God loves you? He paid the penalty for all your sin. Wouldn't you like to receive him and make and make heaven? Who, me? No, but you don't know what I did. Well, whatever you did isn't as powerful as the blood that Jesus shed for you on the cross. So he wants you to be saved and healed and set free. He wants you to be part of his family. Would you like to pray that prayer right now? You say that, God can, God can move mountains. Amen? Amen. So, if you haven't had, that hasn't happened yet today, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Let me say, coming of the Lord. Coming of 
a lot of people are saying, well, you know, he, they've been saying that for a long time and he hasn't come, so well, why should I worry about it? Because God tells you to. He doesn't tell you to worry about it. He tells you to keep alert. Amen. Be patient for the coming of the Lord. That means there's a perfect time. God has it planned out for you. Exact perfect time. So if Jesus is your Lord and you're serving him in a twinkling of an eye, boop, you'll be gone. You'll be with Jesus in the air. And you'll spend eternity with him in heaven. And then all hell's going to break loose on this earth. Wow. Glad I'm not going to be here. Verse 7 says, Therefore, brethren, or be, therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. How many of you know we're in the latter rain? Do you realize that? We're seeing a lot of stuff happening that God promised and it said this was going to happen in the last days. But, Look up. Rejoice. Don't get, oh, yeah, but what about love? No. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Rejoice, because your name is written in the book of life. Mm -hmm. And in a twinkle of an eye, you'll be with the Lord. Ruling and reigning. Amen? Mm -hmm. Ooh, God, hardly wait. Verse 8. He says, you also be patient. Didn't he just say that? Verse 7, he said, therefore be patient. And in verse 8, he says, you also be patient. He says that twice. Why would he say that twice? Okay, I mean, some of us are not being patient. Some of us are upset with God because he doesn't move fast enough. Amen? Mm -hmm. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Establish your heart. Be patient. Okay, where's your heart at? This is what God's looking at. He's not looking at your hairdo. He's looking at your heart. Is it totally dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ and on his word? That's where we have to be, amen? Yeah. Jesus is Lord, supreme authority, ruler, boss. Amen? Amen. Okay, verse 9. Uh-oh. Some of us are going to like this one. <laughs> Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Oh, don't be grumbling. How many of you know it's really easy to grumble? You know, wherever you go, there's going to be somebody that does something that you don't like or you're not comfortable with or whatever. How many of you realize that? Mm -hmm. Even if it's in this church. Somebody's going to do something that was, might irritate you. Well, you know what that guy did. You know what she said to me? You know, and we're mumbling and grumbling. And did you realize the Bible says that Jesus is standing at the door and he is judging us? He is. He's the judge. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not the judge. How many of you realize that somebody may do something because God told them to do that and you may not like it? Amen. Somebody may have a job to do, and you don't like it because he's doing it. He's not doing it your way. Well, if God wanted it done your way, he would have had you do it. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that right? Okay. <laughs> Verse 10. He says, my brethren. Again, who's he talking to? Believers. Believers. Yeah. Talking to. The, the brothers and sisters in the church take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. And when you go down and, and you take a look at the prophets in the Old Testament, many of them were killed and tortured and beat up. Prophets in the New Testament were killed. The apostles were all murdered. I think Peter was was hung was he was uh, uh, hung upside down on a cross. 
Paul had his head severed. How many of you know, if you stand and read his writing, he knew it was coming, but he didn't quit. He didn't say, well, I guess I'm not going to talk about Jesus anymore. Someone's liable to do something bad to me. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. They knew the difference. The thing about it is, is that, like I, like I said last week, that this life we're in is just like a vapor. It's a short time. Eternity lasts forever. No night and no day. No time. It's just going to go on and go on and go on. And we get to be spend it with the Lord. If we turn away from God, then we got the, a problem. We're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. He says, Above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, lest you fall into judgment. Okay, so... When you have to swear an oath, do you do it or do you say, yes, I believe that. No, I don't believe that. Amen. How many of you realize that this is the only, there's some of the other authors in the New Testament that say, you know, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So swearing, we're not talking about cuss words. We're talking about giving allegiance to a government other than the kingdom of God. And I know about you, I, uh, I was a, a soldier, and I had to take the, uh, the oath of allegiance when I was inducted into the military. And they owned me for six years. They could do anything they wanted with me. I'm glad I survived. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm glad I got saved. I wasn't saved back in those days. So I just want to encourage you, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And here's something else. Sometimes it's not a, always a good idea. To, if so if you have to say no to somebody, it's not always a good idea to tell them why you said no. Sometimes you just say no, I can't do that. Or no, no, I, I won't do that. And then you let them figure it out why. And if they ask you, why won't, why no? I say, well, hang on a little while and you'll know. You'll find out why I said that. So God's going to give you the wisdom and he's going to give you the right answer. Now here's something that I learned a long time ago and I think has helped me out a lot in my, in my uh, decisions. The, the, whole, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is he's a judge in there. And we make a decision... And, he, and he, he's a referee in our heart. And I was played baseball long enough to I know a referee, if, it was, if I was safe, shh, if I was out, okay? And so the Holy Spirit is going to let you know when you make a decision. So anytime you have a decision to make, get God involved in it. Say, okay, God, I'm going to make this decision. I'm going to, I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to listen to you. And if you listen in your spirit, the Holy Spirit's going to say, Out, out! You say, oh, you still have time to change your mind. You can change it. Say, okay, I don't believe that's God wants me to do it that way. So I'm going to say, no. And then God, God says, Phew, save. And you got that check in your spirit. The Holy Spirit is saying, okay, it's the right thing to do. Okay, it's the wrong thing to do. Now, I don't know about you, but you're... Sometimes you learn things the hard way. Kim and I have learned a few things the hard way. But I tell you what, the Holy Spirit is in you, and he isn't there just to, to give you goosebumps. He's there to lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen? And he wants you to be, end up being like Jesus. Now, how many of you realize the war that Jesus was going on at Gethsemane? When he knew he was going to have to be crucified, and tortured and beaten. And how many of you know the devil was there trying to get him to, you know. If the, if the devil had known what the accomplishment of it was going to be, he went through, he was he sweat blood. Anybody ever sweat blood? I've dripped some before, but usually because if I did some stupid thing, cut my hand or whatever. 
forgot nosebleed. But that wasn't because of the, of the pressure on my brain to, to do what God wanted me to do. He has never asked me to be crucified. He's asked me to do some stuff I didn't realize. I can't do that, God. He says, yes, you can. Do it. Yes, sir. So I do it, and he answers. He comes through. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Boom. Smack. <clears throat> okay. Verse 11 says, Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard the, the persecution of Job. Per and perseverance. Perseverance of Job. And seen the end and intent intended by the Lord. That is, the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. And we were just talking earlier about, about Job. Job went through it. Mm -hmm. And you know, he and the devil and God had a chat about him. The devil says, well, I want that boy. God says, you can't have him. He says, yeah, but you, you just keep protecting him. And he says, well, it says, what well, you can do what you want to, you just can't kill him. You can't kill him. So the devil goes on and he just just treats him horrible, kills his kids and does all this horrible stuff. And Job mm -hmm. is out there in sackcloth and ashes, and but he hasn't he hasn't blamed God for this. He hasn't said anything bad. And then the devil brings all these buddies around to come in and try to talk him out of it. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God finally tells Job, He says, "Look, this is who I am. I'm the Creator." I can do all things. And uh, I am who I say I am. And Job never let down, never accused God. And the end result was that he was blessed coming in and blessed going out. He had more than he ever thought he would, could imagine. God blessed him above uh, our imagination. You're or his imagination. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, if you're going through a tough time, don't blame God. God's got a perfect time. Have patience. And I believe God's going to get you through that. Amen? Mm -hmm. Have patience. <clears throat> Verse 13. Okay, we're going to get into some interesting uh, situation here. Talking about healing. He says, is any, anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Verse 13. Anybody suffering? There's a lot of different ways you can suffer. Yeah. You can suffer from, from physical problems. Or you can suffer from uh, relational problems. You can suffer from financial problems. If you're, if you're suffering in any way, God has the answer right there. One word. He wants to talk to you. He wants you to talk to him. He says, pray. As a matter of fact, if we go through the, from here to the end of the chapter, he's going to tell us to pray a lot. It's going to be a, prayer is going to be used. And one of the reasons that God has put us on the earth and made us who we are is so that we can commune with him. We can talk to him. God wants to talk to you. He knows all the things that you're going through. He knows everything about you, and he knows how to help you. And he can answer your prayers. So everybody say pray. Pray. Talk to God. Ask him. And the thing about it is you need to pray what God pray his word. If you have going through a situation, find out what the Bible has to say about it, and then pray the word. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So going to pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. You know, singing psalms is a form of prayer. When you're singing to, to the Lord, you're, he likes that. That's communicating with him. I love it. I get up in the morning, I start singing to God. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Yes, I love you, Lord. God bless you. Mm -hmm. 
And then I start praying in the spirit, singing in the spirit. Singing is important, part of your relationship with God. And so people say, well, I can't sing, Pastor. Baloney. Make a joyful noise if you can't sing. God will still love it. Amen? Yes. Verse 14. We all have heard this scripture a lot of times. Is anyone among you sick? It's a question. Physically ill. Mentally ill. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Okay, now, you notice it didn't say let the elders of the church call the people that are sick. What does it say? If there's any sick among you, call for the elders. Okay, so whose responsibility is it? It's the person that mm -hmm. needs healing mm -hmm. to call for the elders, right? Yeah. Okay, I just want to get that way. That way I don't have to feel guilty because someone's laid in bed for two days and I didn't even know it because I didn't pray enough, hard enough to know that they were sick, even though they were 14 miles away. Okay, so God understands that. He says, if you're sick and you need prayer, call for the elders. Now, elders... You got, you got to listen to this next scripture now. He says, And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Okay? Everybody say the prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. So elders, one of the main things that an elder has to do is trust the God to heal the sick. When you pray over somebody, you have to believe they're going to be healed. Mm -hmm. You can't think, oh, I'll, I'll lay hands on them, but I don't know if they're going to get healed or not. Or you pray this prayer, Lord, if it be your will, pl please heal them. That is not a prayer of faith. When God said, Lord, if it be your will, he was He was praying uh, over his whether or not he was going to have to be hung on a cross. Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's what Jesus said. Now, a lot of people take that, well, if it's not his will. Well, the prayer of faith knows the word. So the Bible says, Jesus said, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen? Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Isaiah 57, 19, you guys all should have that memorized by now. I've said it so many times. Okay, I create the fruit of the yes. peace, peace to him that is far off and him that is near, and I will heal him, saith the Lord. What's God going to create? The fruit of your... Yes. So what are you going to say? Well, I sure hope you get healed. <laughs> are you going to say, be healed? Yes. Be healed. When God created things, what did he say? Let there be, and there was. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let there be. So you're going to have to, when you pray, as an elder, you're going to have to pray in faith. Mm -hmm. You have to trust God that he's going to perform the fruit of your lips. You're going to speak the word. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to cast out the devil. You're going to bind the devil, cast him out. Mm -hmm. Amen? You're going to release the healing power of the Holy Spirit to flow in him or her. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. He says... And let them pray over him. Ever say, buddy, pray. Yeah. There's that word pray again. If you want healing, it's going to involve prayer. Okay? If you want to be involved in the healing ministry, you need to pray. If you want healing in your body, you need to pray. Amen? Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, right? Uh anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, we have a little bottle of oil that we use up there. Angie has it. We can take the lid off and, and put oil on there. The oil is representative of the Holy Spirit. Right? Mm -hmm. 
So basically, when you anoint someone with oil, you're releasing the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. You can lay hands on the sick, if there's an anointing, or you can anoint him with oil, and that oil represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 15. It says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. Okay? Does it say, and the prayer of faith might save the sick? Mm -mm. Well, okay. All right, yeah. there you go. I didn't write it. And the Lord will raise him up. Okay, the time's coming when that's going to happen. Bang. When? I don't know. That's God's timing. It's not my timing. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. How many of you know that some sickness is, is, it comes on people because of sin in their life? Mm. Things that they do to their body that's not good for them. Food they eat, things they drink, things that they do to their body causes problems. Some people just get sick because it's going around. You know, there's a disease that's happening. We've had a lot of people get this coronavirus. Okay? So, basically, if you're going to pray for somebody that has the coronavirus, how are you going to pray for them? You're going to bind the devil. Mm -hmm. You're going to speak to the, to the flesh to be healed. And you're going to cast that spirit of coronavirus out. That's a spirit. Amen? Even though it's, a, it's infected a lot of people. So, basically, the power of God is more powerful than the coronavirus. Yes. However, we still have to use our brains, right? How many of you know that uh, just because I'm saved doesn't mean I can go out and play in the street, in the freeway, okay? And no car is going to hit me because you know, the cars are there. The, the, the rules are there to keep me from getting hit by a car. If I choose to go play in the street, chances are me getting hit by a car are really good. Either that or get arrested, thrown in jail, one of the two. <clears throat> so, God wants us to be safe, amen? Mm -hmm. But he also wants us to be anointed and powerful. Verse 16, he says, Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. Okay? If you're if you got a problem that you're dealing with physically or mentally and you want somebody to pray for them, tell them. See, this is what. And here's a little suggestion from a pastor who's been around a long time. If you're going to have pay, people pray for for problems because of problems that you're going through, don't just have anybody pray for you. Make sure that the person that you're going to have pray for you is not a gossip. Mhm. Mm Amen? Mm -hmm. Because things get passed around, right? Even in this church, man, things get passed around faster than you can imagine how fast they get passed around. And that's not right. It shouldn't be that way. <clears throat> Amen? Mm -hmm. It's okay to be a blessing. It's okay when we start getting in people's business and you start getting nosy and being a gossip. That's, God doesn't like that. In fact, there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible that talks about gossips. And they, God doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. So, be wise when you go to, to have someone pray for you. You're going to tell them, well, this is, what, this is what's bothering me. I've been having a struggle with this or that. And uh, you want to be sure it's somebody that, will, that you can trust is not going to go out and tell the whole world or put it on Facebook. Yeah. That's why I pray for so and so last night. Guess what they did? <gasps> <laughs> You'd be surprised how much stuff goes on Facebook, guys. All right. Uh, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I like what the Amplified Bible says. The effective heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes much power available. It's dynamic and it's working. 
Okay. In other words, if you're in right relationship with God, in other words, if you if, if you've confessed your sin to God, He's forgiven you and cleansed you from all unrighteousness, that makes you righteous, right? Yeah. And then you pray, your prayers are going to be powerful. Mm -hmm. So here's one of the key things. If you, you want to pray, you got to pray for somebody. Best thing to do is go and talk to God. If you have any sin in your life or something that you're not sure of, confess it to God. Say, get, get right with God. And then go pray for somebody. Okay? When you Before you come to church, if you've been going through something and you know it's wrong, talk to God. Ask Him to forgive you. Okay? Confess the sin to Him. He'll forgive you. And then when you come to church, your prayers are going to get heard. And the Holy Spirit's going to be able to operate through you. But if you're sitting in the pew here and you got all this uh, this saved up venom in your side of you or anger or whatever it is that you're having to deal with and you aren't ready to get rid of it, uh, the Holy Spirit ain't going to be able to use you. Amen? I didn't get any amens on that. Okay, let's go to verse 17. Talking about Elijah now. We're talking about prayer again now, so listen. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. You see how now it says Elijah was he was just like us. He was a person. Okay? He prayed and it didn't rain for what what do you think would it go happen around here if it didn't rain for three and a half years? Pretty, be pretty bad, wouldn't yeah. it? Farmers wouldn't like it. Forests wouldn't like it. Nothing would like it. I'm sure they didn't like it back there if it didn't rain for three and a half years. And then he prayed and it rained and it was enough to produce fruit so that people could eat again. How many of you know the rain is what brings forth the crops? Mm -hmm. Okay? And if he can pray for something that important, why can't we? I want to challenge you to pray. Pray for revival. Pray for America. Pray for this church. Amen? Mm -hmm. Pray for me. I need prayer. Pray for Kim. She's the hardest working lady I've ever been around. I can't believe all the stuff she does. Blows me away. I keep asking God, I said, how come you bless me with such a wonderful wife? He says, just because of my grace and mercy. <laughs> okay. Verse 18, and he prayed again, and the earth gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Aren't you glad for that? Yes. So, God's given us some words here about how to deal with our money. Amen? Mm -hmm. He's given us instruction on being patient. And he's given us instructions on how to get healed or how to minister in healing. Amen? Mm -hmm. And he's given us instruction on what we should do in our relationship with him. And that is pray. <laughs> there you go. So let's pray. Pardon? Oh, did I miss them? Oh, there they are. They're on the other screen. Oh, they were hid. <laughs> Verse 19. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner away from the error of his ways will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a pretty interesting scripture. Uh, it says, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and uh, the, the Bible calls these kind of people, it calls them backsliders. Okay? Wanders from the truth. Now, who's the truth? Jesus. John 14, 16. Mm -hmm. I am the way, the truth, and life. No one goes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the truth. So if you wander from the truth of the word, now you can say, well, what about the word? Well, read John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
verse 13. So Jesus is the word. Amen? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, in Revelation, at the end, it, it says, and on his robe was written, the word of God. His name is the word of God. Mm. Okay? So basically, we say we need to spend time in the word, get to know Jesus, and we need to be doers of the word. Amen? Now, if someone turns away from the word, then it's our responsibility as brothers and sisters to love them and to bring them back into that right relationship. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sin. And there's a, uh, there's a religious war going over over that scripture uh, because there's a, a group of, uh, of theologians that say, well, once saved, always saved. Once you receive Jesus, there's no way you can lose your salvation. There's a whole bunch of scriptures in here. And when you sit down here and read that, uh, here it says he'll save a soul. Now, the soul isn't your body, okay? You're, we can all lose our body and go to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Our spirit, when we're born again, our spirit goes, our soul is is our relationship. That's where our relationship with God Okay, Our spirit is with God. The Holy Spirit is living in us, and he's dealing, trying to, to get our soul tuned up to his word. Amen? Yeah. Okay, if we turn away from him, Okay, say, uh, say, Buddha. Okay, I decide I'm going to follow Buddha. How many of you realize that? It's not going to work. In fact, we have a testimony right here in this house of a relative that has turned to Buddha and is going through uh, the worst part of their life, and they have cannot. They, they need to be saved. They need to. We need to pray. We've been praying for them. Amen. Yeah. But Buddha isn't the answer. Jesus is the answer. Yeah. Now, if I say, can't say anything else, the most important thing we can do is remember that the cross of Christ has to be the center of our ministry. Jesus died on the cross for us. If we don't believe that, we will never make heaven. No one will. Okay? Uh, Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for the remission of sins. He became our redeemer. Amen? Mm -hmm. When we confess Jesus as the Lord of our life and we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Okay? We're saved. And from that point on, the Bible calls us babes in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then we need to grow. And in the midst of all that, we have an adversary that wants us, wants us to turn away from God. So he's going to bring all kinds of things in our way as we go through our life to try to turn us away from the truth. The Word of God is the truth. So we have to stay with the Word. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I realize it's not always easy because there's a lot of fun things to do out there if you're in the world. And there's people growing fields of it out here. There's, there's some people who smoke it all the time. People are drinking all the time. I mean, it's just something that keeps people Keep, keeps messes with their minds so they don't really need God. How many of you know we need God? And I don't care how much alcohol you drink, I don't care how much weed you smoke, it won't get you to heaven. Sooner or later, you'll pay the price. Amen? So I just want to encourage you. Make sure Jesus is the Lord of your life. If you got sin in your life, ask him to forgive you and turn away from it. Don't do it anymore. Amen? And you will be saved. Your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when you stand before the great white throne judgment, you, you won't have to stand there because Jesus already stood there for you and he took your judgment. Amen? I love you all. God bless these people. And we just pray right now, Lord, for their salvation, their healing, and Lord, uh, that you would restore their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.